in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to attach a valence. Now I get so many requests on how to attach a valence. And one of the things I definitely want to tell you guys, be mindful of, be mindful of the type of fabric you choose to create your swags with. Some fabric really is much easier to create a valence than others. Normally, if I create a valence, and if you look at my designs, I tend to go with easier to manipulate fabrics such as any kind of knit cotton, uh, any kind of knit stretch, any kind of sequin, uh, but it would be the mesh sequin because it's a lot lighter, or any kind of uh, crushed sheer is amazing, satin is amazing. The one thing about satin that you want to definitely look out for is that it holds wrinkles, right? So if you're going to create a balance with satin, you want, you want to either make sure you steam it, right? Or when you are prepping your linen, like when you're putting it away and things like that, if you fold it correctly, you really wouldn't have to be too concerned with wrinkles. So some of the proper ways to fold satin would be either rolling it, right? Or just properly folding it as if it was a sheet. That way it's flat and it doesn't really adhere to, uh, you don't really get a lot of wrinkling, right? So for today's video, I'm going to be using CV Linen's mesh, uh, sequin. Now I love their mesh brand because it's really lightweight. It's really easy to manipulate and it's not as heavy as their more premium quality. Now the premium quality is amazing as well, but I normally use that when I want to keep out the light because it's not um, as transparent, right? But normally if I'm trying to do any kind of swagging or anything like that, I tend to use what we're using today. And we're actually going to be using this silver. And if you are interested in getting your own, click the link in the description and guess what? You can get some. Not to mention you get to save 10% by using Posh. That is the discount code that's going to save you 10%. So let's get into it, shall we? So when I am beginning to create a valence, right? One of the first things I do is locate the middle of my fabric because if I'm using a valence, which is normally a 20 foot panel or a 30 foot panel, I don't want to one side be a lot longer than the other. And when you're creating a valence and you only have one panel of fabric, I love it that way because guess what? That one entire panel, it acts as your swag and it acts as your pole cover. And it just makes it a lot more simpler than having to create a design with three pieces of fabric for your valence. So for today, we are using CV Linen's mesh uh, sequin, right? And this is actually the entire bolt, right? So you could get the whole bolt, which is 10 yards. And the only thing I normally would do with a bolt is I would put a, uh, I would put a seam on either end just in case I want to repurpose it for panels as well. Now, if you want to see the repurposing video, click one of the links below and you can check out that video as well. So getting into the design, I want to locate the middle of my fabric, which is this right here, right? So I'm going to just pin, to just pick up the end or one of the ends. It doesn't matter because they both are the same. And then I'm just going to secure it to my backdrop with a safety pin, right? No specific safety pin, nothing fancy, just a regular old safety pin. So I'm going to take a safety pin and I just want to secure it there. Right there in the middle. Now the whole purpose of this only is to serve as securing your fabric to the backdrop. So you can go on it either end and start creating your design. It don't have to be up there any specific way. It doesn't have to be on the opposite end of the crossbar. It just needs to be there. So you don't have got to look for a certain specific way to do it. All you're doing is securing this fabric to your panel or to the middle of your backdrop. So once you do that, you now are going to separate your two sides. So you know this side is five yards, right? because this is 10 yards. And then you know that this side is five yards. So once you do this, you're going to take another safety pin, right? And you're going to secure this to the upright. Just like that. So then you're going to take the panel on the opposite side and do the same exact thing. Now I'm showing you this in a close-up so you can actually see just how you're going to pin this to your 
uh, upright. So you're going to take a safety pin, right? And you're just going to go through the hole or through the slot, which is this here. Go through your side slot and then go up. Let it come out through the top and then close your safety pin. And that is how you're going to secure the pins. I mean, secure this fabric to your upright, but it's just temporary. It doesn't stop there. So stay tuned. Okay, so now that pin that you put in there earlier, now you're just going to re remove it because your fabric is secure. It's there, it's flat, it sh everything should be flush and nice and even, right? So now I'm ready to go back to the first side to start actually creating my pleats. So like I said, since this fabric is really easy to manipulate, um, it's, it's not really a lot of pleating and manipulation that goes into the actual design. You really could just start from the bottom right you want to hold your fabric in your hand because this this hand is actually controlling the way the fabric fall in your hand so then you go to the bottom and you could just come up it's not really a lot to do right just keep on going up there's a pleat uh several pleats so let's show that again so when you're starting from the bottom you want to be sure that you're holding this, this, the fabric in this hand, which is your right hand, hold it out so that you're not, the, the fabric isn't laying incorrectly, right? So you want to hold it out to make sure that fabric goes straight down. And then you're going to go down, take your hand alongside the pole. You want to maybe bring it out a couple inches, not many, just to give you a swoop, right? So you just want to come out and you can let your fabric, let the pole, guide the fabric, right? Just keep on going up alongside the pole. See those beautiful pleats? And notice how this hand is still holding the fabric nice and straight, just like that. So when you get to the top, only thing you're gonna do now is remove your pin, right? Remove your safety pin. And then you're going to secure that with a pipe cleaner. See why I love pipe cleaners? They come in handy, a whole bunch. So now you're going to twist the pipe cleaner, not too tight, just enough to secure your pleats. The thing I love about these, same thing, if this was a zip tie, it would be really hard to continuously manipulate the fabric to fix the pleats and all that stuff. But since this is a, a pipe cleaner, I can easily uh, manipulate, I could easily change, I could easily adjust, right? And then it's, a, it's your, all your pleats are secure. So no matter really what happens here, you will not lose your pleats, right? So now you're gonna take this and you want to attach it to the top by taking the pipe cleaner and going through the slot. But make sure it's the slot in the back. So once you go through the slot, just going to twist it around, give it a couple twists, not many, just maybe one or two. And the beauty of this is guess what? There's your pole cover. Ta-da! That's it. So this is going to be your basic balance, right? And just using just, just sequin alone, really make this basic backdrop really pop, right? So keep on watching and watch how we finish up this design and add some of the LED, the LED curtain lights, right? And it's going to look fantastic. Ooh.